Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, shalom, 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 shalom. Israel, hey, blessings, each and every last one. Let me close this real quick. We are here, live, in the flesh. You know, we've been able to encourage a lot of people uh, this week. We really, really, truly have. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Mother of her in there. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, anyway. Hey, greetings, each and every last one of you, sweet, precious, strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming name, our soon coming King, Yahshua, I'm Sheik. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Blog Talk Radio. Hallelujah. I am your host. We hope that everybody's doing fine, doing well. Glory to the King. I hope that everybody that went through Hurricane Harvey that you're doing okay. The ones went through Irma that you're doing fine and well, doing okay. Hallelujah. If you're alive, you're doing okay, you're doing well. Uh, the path of the hurricanes didn't go like people thought that they would, but hey, I want to send a shout out to everyone I made. Uh, Got to acknowledge it again, because our, our sisters on the Sister Sisters radio broadcast, they're doing pretty good. They're doing very well. Um, even brothers are going over there and getting edified. Hallelujah. Uh, so they're doing very well. But man, they said some strong stuff last night. Now, why is it that you sisters out there don't get so upset at our sisters when they say strong stuff about y'all, but then when Pastor Dow says it, all of a sudden you lose your mind? Why is that? See, because I'm under no illusion. I know you women just as well as you know each other. Mm -hmm. I do. I had not been living all my life sticking my head in the sand. Nope. But I also know men, too, and I'm not blinded to neither one of us. But anyway... There ain't none but the righteous going to enter into the kingdom of the yard. None but the righteous going to see him in the first place. So, hallelujah. The guest calling number 515-602-9654. It's 515-602-9654. You like to talk to Pastor Dow, you can get into the caller queue. You press number one, and I will be there be the Father's will. With that in mind and stuff, now, this is what we call the Shabbat evening broadcast, and this is where we actually take your phone calls. That's what we do. We take your phone calls. And in taking your phone calls, there'll be some of you that may want to try to speak to me, but you can't speak to me. And the reason why you can't speak to me is because you uh, or I have been preoccupied and been busy all week long. And so I haven't been able to take your phone calls. So now we're here. Yep. And I'm able to take every last one of your phone calls. But when you get on here, don't give us a novel. We don't want to hear your life story from the time you was knee-high to a snake shadow, how you got bit by an ant, you slid down a slide and busted your little knee, and you got one stitch in your eyebrow. We don't want to hear all that. Let's just get in and get right on to the truth of the matter. Hallelujah. Because there are others uh, that want to be asking burning questions that may have a desire to have something to answer. All right? So with that, let's go to the phone line. Uh, Brother Junior, call number 929-929. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Survey Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you? What's going on, Pastor Dow? It's about to long, Junior. Um, thank you so much for the teaching last week. That was a great teaching. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Yes, sir. It's a great teaching. Um, Only if people can apply the principles. Absolutely. Exactly. It's, that's it. You can't watch it and don't do nothing. No. And the videos, too, both on YouTube and Patreon. Great videos. Appreciate everything. Keep doing, doing it faster, and you know, 
keep on. So, love you so much, Pastor, and you be good, all right? All right, Julian. Love you so keep much, too. Be encouraged. All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's go to Omaha, North Carolina. 919, 919. It's Pastor Dow, you know, 72 radio broadcast. I can help you, my brother. Greetings, my pastor, my teacher. Greetings, 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 and shalom, shabbat shalom. Uh, I just want to say, um, you know, just thank you for part of the ministry. Um, I just uh, actually finished watching um, Community Living 1 and 2. And, um, you know, you're a great teacher. You're a great man, and I appreciate your your principles and your um, righteousness, uh, which has been proven because you're always consistent with your uh, messages and your conversation. And I just wanted to say that um, Shabbat Shalom, and I uh, thank you. Now, I do have one question as well. What's one that? more. I um, I know it was because uh, I think the trivia, and I don't know if you're getting the um, the twenty dollar a month contribution from from patrons. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go down there and look, and then when I get home, I may be able to check it while I'm here on the phone. I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. Because I know a couple of times you were saying that uh, I don't think you had saw it. And now I'm also doing, um, trying to do 50 a week as well. But the 20 is what I was concerned with. Because I was like, man, I don't know. Because I went about, I think I did that a different kind of way or something. I didn't, um, yeah, I did that a different kind of way, I think. Oh, man. Yeah, I did it. I'm looking. I may not be able to do as good on this phone right here. I may have to just. When I get back down yeah. there, just check, you know what I mean, on, on the account down there. Uh, everything's starting to okay. slow down. You know what I mean? It's starting to slow down. And so, yeah. Uh, I, I'm getting ready to start I, I putting out trouble. videos and content to the people who are, um, you know, definitely up there uh, in the 20 and 50 and $100 range. I got plenty of content for them. All right? Yes, sir. What you got? Oh, uh, that's right. I just want to say you about Shalom. I love you, man. I, I just, uh, oh, you know, you go through trials and tribulations in life, but I, 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 um, I'm just grateful to y'all. Uh, you know, I was driving to work and left side, my driver's side uh, caliper had locked up on me in traffic. Really? And, um, yeah, just like, yeah, it busted and locked up on me. But, you know, the, the thing, the blessing was is that it was an accident down the road that caused me to, to stop. And so I was inching along, and when I stopped, like, the third time for traffic, and I tried to go, I just heard this loud noise on the side, and then really my tire got locked up. And I was like, you know, I pulled over to the side of the road, and I called my job. I was like, you know, I ain't, I'm not going to be able to make it. This is what's going on. And uh, I was like, man. But, you know, the blessing was just that I could have been driving. That thing could have happened when I was on the highway. And I could have killed myself or hurt somebody else on the highway. And I said, you know, even in your da- up and downs, man, you, you, God is always there. Hallelujah. And that's, that's, uh, you know, that's such, such a um, such a blessing. I, I, I remember what you said about, you know, straightway. Things don't always go the way that you want it to go, you know, with people, finances, or business, you know, but you keep on pressing away. So I just wanted to say Shabbat Shalom, and I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit and grateful for the ministry. Thank you. All right, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Be encouraged. King coming. Let's go to Arizona, brother. Word. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. How you doing, brother? Word. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Pastor. Yeah. Coming in pretty good. Hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I love you, Pastor. Uh, bless you. Uh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Elder. I'm praying for all the saints. Um, I just wanted to kind of call in and just let you know I'm still here, still on the team. Um, and just to encourage you to keep preaching, keep fishing, keep doing what you're doing, keep getting hated on and rejoicing greatly in that hour. Because your, your, cause your reward in, in Shemayim is great. Uh, and uh, Shabbat Shalom to all the saints. Hey, bro, word. Uh, scattered through the dysphoria. Yes, sir. Hey, did you see what John Tatum did, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to come on the land. He wanted to record a video. He wanted to use the services of the saints, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, talk about 
uh, what, what's going to happen when Judah wake up, but he's still over there asleep, looking like John with a hunt. But I'm going I'm to calm down. I'm going to slow down. You know, it's pretty yeah, bad, man. though. He said, I mean, you know how these devils work? They got to try to irritate you. You know, when the devil ain't got no legal ground on you, he ain't nothing but like a house fly. He just going to keep boiling on you. You know, but you, you a lion. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't nothing but a fly. So, you know, niggas and flies, they always do some shit, right? Yeah, you know, the sad part about it is is that people have to resort to the nature of the devil of lying, falsifying information. You don't understand what I mean. That's what they all do. And he has to sit up there. Now, mind you, he asked me to promote his CD. He asked me. And then he gave me a thanks for doing it. And because um, we, we kicked him out of the ministry because of his lack of integrity and he had moral and ethics problems, six, eight, nine months later, he turns around and put a copyright infringement on on um, uh, on on me for uploading his video. Now, if that ain't a devil and a snake, I don't know what is. I mean, he act like he act like without you promoting it, like he would be anywhere. Like he ain't no premier artist. I mean. Nobody's checking for him. So he would have did himself a favor by just leaving it up. He would have did himself a bigger favor by just repenting for whatever he did and just humbling himself and, and, and trying to he trying to sneak in another way. But I know I'm trying to get into the straight gate. So I'm going to just work out my own salvation. But, yeah, a devil going to be a devil, though. Hey, that man, he turned around and used my platform, our land, our people in the ministry, our instruments, our tabernacle, our building section, mm. and I'm editing, video editing, and then didn't compensate nobody for, for all the work, the time and energy effort that they put in. Mm. I mean, he didn't give no love offer? No, I mean, wow. That's, Nothing. You know, that's just, that's terrible. I mean, hey, the dead way didn't make cut off. Hallelujah. You know, and, and you moving on the door, these devils going to try to irritate you every single which way. But the thing is, though, jealousy is the rage of man. Yeah. So just keep making them mad, Pastor. Just keep making them mad. I'm going to keep doing that, man, by being righteous. Bro, word, I know you're on the road. You be careful going home, all right? Yes, sir. All right, anything else? Shabbat shalom, team, Pastor. Love you. Shabbat shalom. That's it. That's Brother Word. Arizona. Hallelujah. Let's go to Louisiana, Brother Gary. Call number 318-318. Brother Gary's Pastor Dow. Straightway Truth Radio Broadcast. I can help you. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. I'm just calling in uh, saying um, you're still doing a great job, still uh, listening to everything you say, living it by the life, living it by my life, trying to apply it. All right. What else, my brother? Oh, I um, I'm a veteran. My also, I went to the VA today. You did for uh, uh, a routine checkup, and he was trying to push the flu um, shot on me. Whoa! I, I got out of there. Well, Gary, you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead and try to push the flu shot on you. What else? Yeah, they just was uh, uh, and all these other type of shots. And I said, man, I ain't took those shots since I got out because they made me sick when I was in there. What's the, what did they say then? She was saying, um, I can't force you to take them, but it's just in your uh, good interest to take them. Okay, so what they trying to do is say you, know, you won't have any VA benefits if you don't take them? No, but, you know, uh, well, I know that wasn't true, but if, if anybody that went in there that didn't know no better, they would have just took them. Right. How does that VA thing work, man? Because them, Bishop, have to take them. Bishop now, man, be on me about going down there and getting that percentage raise. So what I have to do, man? I um I uh I got my percentage raised. You gotta take a physical and then they go to the board meeting and and um vote on it to see if they want it up or uh, raise your rates up or down. Right. Alright. 
But uh, that was it. This uh, calling in, being true with the uh, ministry. All right, bro. Be, be encouraged, bro, Gary, okay? Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, I wanted to say that we got the Feast of Tabernacles. First, we got the Feast of Trumpets coming up, and then we have um, they have Atonement. Then we have Tabernacles coming up all this month, within, all within a matter of a few weeks. Hey, you know, we need to go ahead and uh, next week <clears throat> is going to be the lockdown date that we won't be accepting any more people to come to the feast here at Straightway next week by the next blog talk. Uh, so you better get your order in or get your time in now. Hallelujah. You want to send a shout out to Elder Frank. Hope that all of them are doing well down there on the coast because they were down there in Georgia when a lot of that hit. Uh, so we hope the Elder Frank and family is doing well. Glory to the King. Let's go to um, Florida, call number 407. 407 is Pastor Dow. We're on the Straight With You radio broadcast. I can help you. Hey, how you doing, Pastor Dow? I'm all right. Who, who am I speaking with? This is Jeff. 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 You speak with me like, uh, what, three weeks ago? Okay, Jeff. Why, what about the that? situation that I told you about? Well, man, I can't remember all that, man. I talk to a <laughs> lot of people every day. Right, 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 right. Well, well, uh, it was a situation that um, uh, about me and my girlfriend, and uh, you know how she not uh, being disobedient towards me, mm. you know, and things like that, you know. All right, so what you got? But uh, I definitely, well, well, uh, actually, man, I, I watched your video a couple of days ago. Uh, the state of marriage, right? That's that's the name. That's the title on the on the on the uh, on your uh, video. So. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to know, Pastor, um, uh, hey, man, you spent some real truth on that video. I, I, I loved it, man. Well, thank um, you. Now, oh, no problem, no problem. I want to know, Pastor, what's the difference of American culture wedding and the Hebrew wedding? Like, and also, is it, is it necessary to buy a wedding ring if you're in the Hebrew culture? Wedding, you know, this, that's my question there, Pastor Dow. Well, first of you all, know? no, sir, it's not necessary about wedding ring. If you notice, we don't wear wedding rings. We haven't worn wedding rings I, in 20-something years. That's because the Bible calls them strange gods. Uh -huh. Strange gods is in your hands. Right. Um, but now the okay. difference is, is that what a lot of people don't understand that the marriage contract is one of the most binding contracts that there is here in society. That once they get you into that, all the rest of the other contracts right. follow. And anytime you contract with the government, you lose your civil liberty or your liberties and freedoms, which you don't know. And you cannot dissolve that marriage. And so when you get a state marriage license, you went into a third party polygynous contractual agreement. And to show that you are right. in bed with the state, you can't dissolve that in case you know you got a, a, a wife that's rebellious or an abusive husband. You can't just write a writ or a bill of divorce and give it to him and then walk away from him scot-free. You're bound by the law of this land. That is the difference between a Hebrew marriage and a state marriage. Right, right, right. So in that case, that means that, so basically saying that, Pastor Dow, there's no law in American society to get a, uh, to get a state uh, a marriage license. That means you don't have, it's, it's illegal. That's what I'm trying to say. Illegal is, is not, no, you know, if... It's not. If let me woman, tell you something. woman living with you... Bro, let me ask you something. Okay. Let me ask you something. All right, slow down yeah. for a second, all right? Yeah. So, if you got a right, woman man. living with you or cohabitating with you, and y'all cohabitate right. for 30 years and have uh, 10 children, is the state going to bust right. in with its Gestapo laws and stuff and tell you that you can't be married? No. You got that right. Now, you have okay. to understand. No. In everything, mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself, is this a benefit to you if, if this is what you want to do? If you want to go get a state marriage mm -hmm. license, go get it. But there are certain benefits that right. come along with it. Some of the benefits that come along with it is you get to claim your wife and your children as dependents while you're in the workforce. And you also get to claim taxes. Okay. And you also 
get to uh, okay. get Social Security in case one of the spouses die prematurely. Um, but if you don't get a marriage license, none of those benefits are available to you, if you understand what I mean. So you have to ask yourself, is this something you really, truly want to do or not? Right, right, right. And, you know, Pastor Bell, man, you know, I, uh, um, son, you know, I said to myself, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, because that first video you put out, I said, like, what, last year? You know, I, uh, about the marriage life certificate and all that. And I fully understand that, you know. But, you know, you got women out here, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that is fake. I'm not into that. That just, that just nonsense. That's just nonsense, you know. But, um, like you said, like you said last year, you did a video. Like you said last year, you got to invest in yourself. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, man, you know, so, uh, like, like I said, you got to make your own choice and mm -hmm. decision see if it's for you. All right? Carolina, come here, Carolina. Right. Okay. Carolina's got Giddy, got Charles in her hand. Come here while you're walking. Yes, sir. Come here, open up the door. I'll give you an example. All right, just kind of speak loud, okay? Oh. Yes, sir. All right. Here, let me, let okay. me show y'all. Oh. Oh. Let me show y'all the honor of what they gave me. Look, Charles. See the people out there, son? Way. Hallelujah. You checking everything out? See all the lights? All right. That's Charles. Um, Carolina. Yeah. Did, did you get a state marriage license when you was married when you got married to JC? No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, are y'all doing fine? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Is he taking care of you? Most definitely. Um You got clothes? Yes, sir. Shoes? Yes, sir. Food? Yes, sir. You having sex with you? Yes, sir. You got, you're doing fine, right? Okay. We're doing great. Do, doing great? Yes, sir. Seem to be functioning well? Oh, yes. Is the government kicking down your doors because you didn't get a state marriage license? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're not on some type of special report or something like that? Mm -mm. Are you being interrogated by the FBI, the CIA, or the DEA? No, I'm not. <laughs> not at all. You hear that, son? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I definitely hear that lip, loud and clear. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Bless you. Oh, brother. yeah. <laughs> so, so you see, brother, people function just well. Like I said, you yeah. just got to ask yourself, is this something what you want to do? <laughs> Does that make sense? That's right, Pastor. Yeah, well, what sense. happened to freedom? The thing, though, cause what happened to liberty? What happened to freedom? What happened to liberty? Huh? What happened? <laughs> You're right about that, man, because every day in America, America committed sin every day. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, from your knowledge. Exactly. So, you know, because you got people out here, they have kids, they're living together. You know, now, or oh, suddenly, five years down the road, they want to get married. You know, because, you know, like you said, you're the man of the household, because the things you're already doing for that woman, why get married with a state life? Well, the bottom line doing. is, is that... You really truly mm -hmm. don't want to get a marriage license um, early on uh, because right. if you do, what you're going to do is you're going to bind those children. You're going to bind those children to the state, right. and and uh, you go get a marriage license, you get a birth certificate, and what's especially a birth certificate, and that mother signed a birth certificate and stuff, that gives the state uh -huh. the rights to come in and take their children because you just signed your children over to the state. Now, I know a lot of people oh, don't wow. know this. But we have beat the DHS or Department of Human Services, uh -huh. Department of Child Service. We have beat them on two or three occasions already. Already. Okay. So, you know, we don't wow. put this to the test. Okay. But whether you like it, understand it, comprehend it or not, there ain't no need in getting upset mm -hmm. when, when, when the truant officer right. or the teacher or the police or the DHS come and knock at your door and you've got a state marriage license and a birth certificate and they tell you, that they are their children, they're telling you they're the truth. They are the state's children because you contracted with the state. Now, they don't disclose, they do not wow. disclose those service terms, those terms and agreements to you at the signing of those contracts because you are doing everything like every other red-blooded American does. And they're not going to tell you mm -hmm. what, what, what the fine print is because they know if they tell you what the fine print says, that many people wouldn't participate in it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. 
Okay, man. Hey, that's what it is, Ty. So, in that sense, Ty, that they basically union women are married under the most high, basically. Yeah. Now, Sister Carol and I, right. Sister Carol and I got a marriage license 33 years ago. Our children are 30 right. and 27. Do you think the state is trying to come after our children at 30 and 27? Hell no. No, nah, they ain't thinking about it. Because no. our children going to tell them where to go. But they sure did try uh, when they were in their, in their uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11 because somebody put out a false report. They sure did try then, and we beat uh -huh. them then too. You know, and that was with a oh, state wow. marriage license and with the birth certificate. We still beat them. Wow. Wow. I'm so just telling y'all what I know. Right, right, right. I understand what you're saying, man. In that case, if I would have a a, 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 a a born child with a with my wife or whatever, so that means she didn't, me and her don't have to sign that birth certificate. That's what you're saying. Well, they don't care about you. They really have her, birth, her signature. Bro, Scott, come here for a second. They know it's a hot topic for a lot of people. You know what I mean? This is a hot topic for a lot of people hey, because I, a lot of people just don't know. That's understandable. Either they're not paying attention or whatever right. it is. I don't know what in the world it is, but whatever it is, they just well, don't listen very good. Well, I'm paying attention very clear, man. <laughs> Y'all just see Brother Scott. He's uh, cutting on the broadcast and stuff like this. Okay. Uh, Brother Scott, speak, just kind right. of talk a little bit loud. Um, what gives them jurisdiction... They don't even care if you sign the birth certificate. They want their woman's signature. Is that correct? Either one. Either, either one. one. And what happens when either one of the um, parents signs that birth certificate? What happens? It gives the state jurisdiction. It gives them majority over the union from the marriage. Now they have it with the child. So where they had first, you, you and your wife are married. You, they have a partial jurisdiction. When you sign over a birth certificate, mm -hmm. you sign for a birth certificate. Then they get two-thirds control. Well, don't they have two-thirds, and they're legally, they can take your children. They can tell you where to put your children in schools, vaccinations. They now basically own your children. Once they get two-thirds approval from the parents consenting, whose children are they? The states. Say that again, bro, Scott. They belong to the mm. state. Oh, but wait a minute. I'm an American, and I'm free. And, and I, don't, I, I got a birth certificate, and I got a marriage license. Them are my children. No, sir. Mm-hmm. Y'all okay. hear that? And okay. we talking, you're talking to a man who yes, actually sir. beat them himself recently. Wow. Recently. Oh, recently. Wow. wow. That's, that's, that's amazing. Thank you, my brother. That's amazing. <laughs> You so y'all see, you're not talking to no dumb dumbs. See, I know we say a lot of things that are unpopular to people. And I know that people hate right. truth and they hate the delivery of it and all this whole other stuff. Only men can listen to me anyway, but hey, it is what it is. All right, brother Jeff, hey, I'm going to have to go ahead and get going, brother, and get some more of these phone calls. They're lining up right now. Okay, Pastor Dow, appreciate the uh, advice and, and bless you, Pastor. And, 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 and uh, you have a strong spirit, my brother. All right, yes, long, long. Hey, I got no one of them bugs so in this radio room back here that bit me in the pulpit last Sabbath. He done flew. I don't know where he went now, but that bugger hit me three times last Sabbath. All right, let's go to Virginia, brother Toby. Call number seven five seven. This is Pastor Dow. You know, straight to the radio broadcast. I can help you, brother Toby. Shalom, shalom, Pastor. I hear that you're having a good evening already. Oh, yeah, we, we hot in the box, man. How you doing, brother Toby? Good to hear your voice. I am doing great. I have so looked forward to uh, today. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I was calling in to say two things. One, thank you for allowing me and my wife to come out there for God. It was definitely a very memorable time, and since then, she is doing amazing. Really? Definitely a 180. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Toby, what do you, what do you think about our people out here? They are the most amazing people I've ever met, and everybody I tell about it, I tell them I'm not telling you where they are because I never want you to go there and mess it up. <laughs> uh, y'all are y'all are the most beautiful people I've ever met, and I mean that. Well, thank you. The, I do have a question for you, though, sir. What is it? 
I have to know, myself and Cross, we've been spending a lot of time together and making some big moves. And uh, uh, I believe things are about to start looking up for uh, Brother Cross real good here, hopefully soon. All right. Sunday, I believe, first day. But our question is, because we can't let it go, um, what was the verse? What was the what now? The verse from, from when you, what was the verse when you were uh, up there before Pastor Joe, uh, or Pastor Fox, I should say, you said that there is a verse that you could quote and nobody would do it. Oh, I know what you're saying. I'll tell you what I'll do, brother. I'll share that one Sabbath here, maybe soon, maybe maybe real soon, when I know I got a lot of people listening, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, another thing, um, I don't know about this, how you're going to handle this Tate thing, Tatum, rather, yeah. but uh, I say call down the bears. Yeah, you're right. Pray, pray out the bears. I agree if, with you. Uh, if you need it, I would strap on a bear suit for you. <laughs> All right? Oh, like I said, you're a better man than me. Brother. You're a better man than me. i tell you what, brother Toby. Um, hey, hold on for a second. Hey, Sister Carol, come here for a second, Sister Carol. Brother Toby, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you something, man. I'm going to tell you, brother, uh, a people, what, what they should do is they should thank the Most High Yah that I have been walking in this way for 20 something years, if you understand what I mean. Yes, sir. Because I'm not the man today that I used to be. Watch this, I'll give you an example. So, Carol, yes, sir. some of this junk that go on today with some of these cowards and stuff, uh, and what these are personal attacks that they do, what would I have done if it was the old me and the old man? Come on up here and talk real close. What would I tell the truth about what I would have literally done? Um, uh, there would be a lot of hurt people because your temperance level was not as it is now with your maturity. Um, they wouldn't get away with half the stuff that they do now. I've, I've seen him uh, go after people's throat for ten times less than what some of them are doing right now. You hear that, my brother? Oh, I hear you loud and clear. I'm going to tell you, I know there's a party store right up the street from my house, and I know they got bear suits. Shut <laughs> <laughs> <Cut> up. <laughs> Seriously, Pastor, y'all um, y'all are amazing. I couldn't have asked for more. Um, and I, uh, I thank God every day. I thank y'all for everything every day. I see things totally different. And... Uh, it was all due to me coming out there and actually seeing. You've opened my eyes, and I thank you for it. Well, glory to the king. We're glad that we can make some type of impact. It was our honor to actually meet you and your wife, man. It really is, man. I, I feel like I've gained a, a brother. I really, truly am, man. It's just, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. That's what it was. It was just a real wonderful time. We had it. God's met a lot of good people. Uh, I'm glad that you and Cross were sticking together there. Uh, y'all keep y'all ear to the grind. Well, I'm sure he's listening, and uh, I will talk to you later on, Pastor. I know you're busy. Shabbat All right. Shalom. All right, Toby. Be encouraged. Shabbat shalom. There's that booger. Who got a fly swat? There's that booger that stung me last Sabbath three times. I wonder if that's the same one. Or if that's another one. There's got to be his cousin or brother or something. I'm going to get him, though. Y'all hold on for a second. I ain't waiting on no fly swat. I'm going to get this booger. Hold on. Dang it. I don't know where he went, but this time he couldn't fly down my sleeve. <laughs> All right. Before I got in the pulpit, well, when I got in the pulpit last Sabbath, I was knocking his walls off of somebody, and this book came up my arm and stung me three times. Made my whole entire week miserable. Arms swell up like a Nerf baseball bat. <laughs> All right, where we at? Let's go to Louisiana, Brother Tyrion. 318, 318's Pastor Dow, you know, Serving Truth Radio oh, Broadcast. Well. How you doing, Brother Tyrion? 
I'm doing all right, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I, didn't, I didn't call to say much. Just, uh, I just want to say thank you again, and um, I appreciate Elder Mitchell as well out in Houston for the advice that he sends through Brother Gary. And it's just, ever since listening to your message, which is three weeks ago, it's like the more I'm, I apply it to my life, the more positive I'm starting to see. Hey. Um, getting job offers. Um, I just feel better mentally. I ain't, stuff ain't whooping me like it was before. And I just, I can't thank the Father enough for that. I just, That's because you're getting stronger. Hallelujah. You're getting and stronger in the most high and the power of his might through obedience of his word. Yes, sir. And I just thank him. I just I wouldn't have been able to find this on my own, and he knows it. It's nothing like this. Man. I I wouldn't trade it for the world. Hey, I really wouldn't. Man, I wouldn't. I ain't. I ain't doing nothing else but this. Serving the Most High all the days of my life. Ain't nothing else to do. It ain't. It re it's really not. And you know, it, and it's just like Elder Mitchell made a point to Brother Gary. I ain't trying to talk about their conversation, but he said, we going backwards. If we ain't getting together, we're going to be going backwards. And I'm like, I analyzed it. I've been thinking about it all night. Like, dang, if we don't come together right right now, it ain't, we ain't going to never be right. We got to get it together down here. Us yeah. and family in Louisiana. So I'm like, I'm going backwards. If I ain't moving forward, I'm going backwards. If it ain't together, I'm going backwards. Hallelujah. I'm, my mind set. Um, moving forward, I just, again, I just glory to the king for y'all anointing. Just keep me lifted up in prayers. All right, my brother, be encouraged, That's okay? Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Utah. Brother Lewis, Brother Jules. It's 801. 801 is Pastor Dow. You're on the straightway through the radio broadcast. How can I help that, Brother Lewis? Come on with it. You talk on once. You talk on twice. Shabbat Shalom. Can you hear me? Oh boy, man, we almost knocked you out the box, man. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh yeah, my silly phone. I uh, I went to take it off here and it pushed mute instead. So it's pretty dumb. But Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I have a question, Pastor. What is it? Um. So with um. With all of us who are actually coming back or discovering who we really are yeah. as uh, Hebrew Israelites, and with our fathers not really knowing because it's evident in some of the acts that they've done when raising us, like, my question is about circumcision. Are we to be circumcised now because um, we're coming back and we didn't know who we are, that we were supposed to be circumcised? in the beginning anyway. I would tell you this, my brother, everybody, every male that comes to this ministry and they come to the knowledge of the truth of the covenant with Abraham that y'all made with Abraham that our people were circumcised and they hear what the law says, they all go get circumcised. I have not had one that I know of that has not went and got circumcised. Okay. So, yeah, that's been on my mind for a long time now, and I want to be 100% sure. i tell you what, I, if, if I was not circumcised, I'm going to tell you what I would do. After knowing what I know in that word, I would go get circumcised. Right. Well, that's pretty much what I've been leaning towards, too. I've even had thoughts of doing it myself. <laughs> do I don't know, it? man. I mean, you ain't got Abraham with you there to do it, man. I don't know. If you know what you're doing, right. but hey, you got the more power to you, brother. Don't let me discourage right. you. Well, I definitely, I definitely don't know what I'm doing, friend. I mean, that time. Well, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to know what you're doing right. once you get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right on. Sure, right but on. me, man, I'd go to the hospital oh, and get circumcised. Right. Well, you know, I've been looking into that, too, just, uh, because I'm, I want to hold it to the sword. That's why I have to make sure that I get it straight from the shepherd's mouth. 
All right. Let's go see how much they will charge you, man. Yeah, I've been looking that up already. It's um, it's pretty pricey, but you know what's what? pretty it's pricey? How pricey. much is pretty pricey? Uh, like over a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, okay. Well, it's just time to start saving for it. All right, brother. Appreciate it, Pastor. Bless Shabbat you. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Damn. We got a whole house down there in Louisiana, man. Uh, let's go um, back to Virginia. Call number 757-757. It's Pastor Dow. You know, Serving Truth Radio Broadcast. I can help you. Pastor. Hey, is that you, Cross? It is. I'm calling from a different line. Yeah, I see. What you got, man? Good hearing your voice. Yeah. He was well. He was well, Pastor. I'm, I'm glad to see you finally getting some uh, some uh, some rest and yeah. getting some bounce back. I know you had a busy, busy couple weeks here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you got, man? Uh, well, I want I want I want to kind of mirror some uh, some comments made by uh, Brother Toby. Go ahead. He had been uh, working pretty hard and diligently, <clears throat> and uh, it was a, a pleasure and an honor to spend the time out there at Gotts and be uh, be welcomed by the, uh, the Straightway family there. Man, it's good seeing you again. I want to say that uh, it is uh, it was a, a pleasure and an eye-opening experience to see uh, truth and uh, uh, integrity and uh, and honest and sincerity out there uh, with everyone in the community, from the brothers, elders, teachers to the sisters as well. The, uh, you are you all are a uh, a tremendous example of the word, and uh, I would. Uh, not be willing to let anything affect that or hurt that in any way, shape, or form. Well, hallelujah, my brother. And I'm glad that you're able find, you finally was able to make it out here because um, I know that um, once you got here and, and then, um, of course, you actually saw everything, saw the way uh, the spirit of our people are and the way we live and, and everything. I knew I knew that, brother, it, it would tug on your heart because... You already knew we were sincere anyway. All you did was just, it just confirmed it even more so. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It was uh, everything I needed, everything that I wanted to see. You know, it's, it's easy to look at things from afar off and, right. uh, you know, make up your mind or have, or have a gut feeling about it. But it's another thing to uh, to be able to sit next to the main people and hear them speak and, speak. and just to see the strength and the spirit and the power in their words. And know that they're doing all these things through and for y'all. Yes, sir. There was never a question in my mind once uh, once I was able to see it. Ross, you seen what these people... I don't people... know if... Uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, my brother. I don't know if, uh, if the young man were ever, ever able to talk to you about it, but uh, I sat down one night with uh, with Brother Elias and his, uh, and his brothers, and uh, I didn't get to say it on one of my videos I really wanted to but uh, it ended up getting cut short but uh, what I wanted to say was that those are some tough wise young men young warriors and uh, if there are any example of what Israel was I can understand why the nations and the other empires feared Israel as much as they did well hallelujah thank you for the kind words my brother oh yeah Oh yeah, I look forward to seeing them grow, and uh, understand and know that our uh, brother Toby and I, you know, we're gonna, we'll continue to move forward, and uh, we'll be out there very soon again. And uh, it's great way needs anything. Uh, you have to look, to look our way. All right, my brother. Good hearing your voice. I got you. Roger that. Roger that. Shabbat shalom. Stay stay fast and stay uh, stay encouraged and uh, stay the close. We know we know you will. Um, you've got a uh, you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yes, sir. I feel it's only the uh, I feel it's only uh, only the beginning, so to say. Yes, sir. That is true. All right, be encouraged, my brother. You too. Shabbat shalom. Cross nineteen eleven. Lord to the King. Go to Louisiana, 504-504, Pastor Dow. We're on the Straight Bitchute Radio broadcast. I can help you there in Louisiana. Sure. 
Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. How are you doing? Shabbat Shalom. Who is uh, speaking this with? Is King calling you back again. Who? King. King. How you doing, King? I'm I'm doing fine. Um, I got a uh, couple of questions. Um, with the uh, first question starting out with um, eating from other people's table, like um, watching other people's videos on YouTube. Is it like I watch uh, you and then I heard you uh, reference to uh, uh, Pastor Corey a couple times, and I actually been watching his videos. Is is that like a is that is that a problem? No, I mean you are in freedom and liberty to watch whoever you want when you want. You don't, you don't save ground watching anybody that Pastor Dow um, co-signs, uh, points you to, that's part of the straightway truth ministry. Pastor Corey is part of the straightway ministry. Um, you don't find right, right. The reason why, I'm, I'm, you know, you are a free man. You can go and listen to anybody you want to. The only reason why I say that is because if the Ruach led you here, and you know what you already have. You need to get rooted and grounded in the truth, the pillar and ground, root pillar and ground of faith. And before you start going out there and listening to all these different kinds of voices, because they're going to bring confusion on you. And when you get mature enough, go out there, listen in. I'm just only trying to protect you spiritually. That's all I'm trying to do. But you are at liberty and freedom to do whatever you want long as I hope you do the right thing in the most high God. Right. And see, that's what I'm trying not to do because, like, uh, I really trust your word. And, like, I, um, I've i only listened to uh, Pastor Corey because I heard you reference his name a few times. I heard you reference another other people, too. But um, Pastor Corey, I've been listening to him, and he, like, he, he also had some uh, pretty powerful word. But I'm going off your judgment because this is where the most high led me to you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just really trying not to step outside of his will because I know it can be a lot of confusion. Yes, sir. It could be. And uh, my second question is, um, like, I've been uh, crying out lately. Is it normal, to, like, after I'm crying out, like, I'm talking about, like, literally crying, like, is it normal to, like, feel a little bit of weak? But, like, I feel a difference, but, like, after it, like, I feel a little, a little, uh, a little drain weak. I don't I don't know if that's the right words to say. Yes. Yes, that is quite normal. Okay. Yes. It's normal I, I for wasn't us. Sure because but it's abnormal for the world, but it's normal for us. Okay. And um my last question is, um I'm I'm dealing with some uh something with my wife and like I like sometimes I feel bad because I, I I feel like I'm coming down harsh, and I don't know if I should be feeling should be feeling like that. But it's like it's something that I'm not doing, and some I know that she shouldn't be doing. And like sometimes it just makes me mad, and I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes I raise my voice with her because I like I get so mad with her, and then well, I like after I do it, I feel bad after I do it. Well, that's because you gotta use, get used to the old flesh. I mean, I don't do too much hollering and screaming with my wives. I just don't. Um, I mean, I do holler and scream. Don't get me wrong. I raise my voice. I speak stern and stuff, but I'm not. Why should I feel bad? Does y'all feel bad when he corrects us? No, sir. No. So, yeah, you been in the stead of y'all, the priest of your home. Why should you feel bad? Right. If right. you're telling her what is right, you shouldn't be feeling bad. Right. And one last thing, how would I come about like coming because I, I can feel it and it, it, it gets to me sometimes because I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Like I know I'm not supposed to be in the city and I like every day I wake up, I can feel, I can feel it like just telling me to leave, but I don't have the means to just, you know, up and leave, uproot and leave. Man, it took me almost four years before I, after I did, I worked my rear end off. I saved money. It took me four years to completely get out of the city. Four years. Four years. But I worked towards that goal. Right. No, probably three years. Three years, something like that. But are you following me? Yes, sir. So if you just start working towards that goal, then the most I will make a way. Okay. 
Yes, sir. Well, um, that that pretty much answers all my questions, and I that I just wanted to really tell you we have truly been a blessing in my life because, man, I done ran across some videos on two, YouTube and it's outrageous. Well, just be encouraged and keep listening. All right. Yes, sir. Keep growing in grace and knowledge. All right, my brother. Yes, sir. All right, bless my Shabbat brother. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bless you too. Yeah, y'all be encouraged out there, okay? You ain't got no reason out there to not be discouraged or something like that. I mean, be encouraged to stay the course, man. Keep the faith. Man, y'all be all right. Let's go to uh, Illinois. It's 217-217. It's Pastor Dow. You know, Sherman Tune Radio Broadcast. I can help you there in Illinois. Hello, Pastor Dow. Um, I just recently, my name is Leticia. I'm Stewart, and I just recently uh, come to the truth. I'm 33 years old. And I had been raised Christian, but, um, you know, I just recently, I feel like the Most High brought me to Hebrew Israelite um, spiritual beliefs. And my question, I have a question. I'm a single mom. My daughter's father is incarcerated. And I just came into a new job position that requires me to work on Saturday. And it's just... I, I feel that I should turn the position down because that is a Sabbath day and I am not to work that day. I just need to know if I'm making the right choice I by think turning you make, down the job position. I think you're making the right choice, uh, especially if it's just not. It's one thing to have more money, but it's another thing to have more money and disobey y'all. I would rather obey y'all. Tell okay. them as long as you'll take the position as long as you don't have to break the Sabbath. Well, see... I have a position already. This is I work at a eye doctor. I'm, I work for glaucoma specialist. Okay. So I do. I've been there for three years, and this um, doctor, this um, he's just a regular eye doctor, and he requires his staff to work on Saturdays. And it's a like you said, it's a higher paying position, but I already have a position. So I just need to know that I need to stay where I am. That way I can keep my Sabbath day and I wouldn't be disobedient. Hey, you know what, sister? Um, if you are, uh, are pretty good at what you do and you continue to you, you make mm -hmm. a stand and you just tell him straight up the reason why you can't work on Sabbath is because you have to obey. Yeah, I mean, you have conviction. Are you following me when, when you yeah. um, don't move from the principles of the law or the principles of what the word says? Public law 97-280. Um, says that, that the, the Bible, in 1982, Congress made the Bible the Word of God in this country. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of things people don't know. But if I was you, and, and if you're already, like you say, you've got position, you're doing okay, wait until the next blessing yes, come along because y'all may bless you with even a better position just because you made a stand for him. I sure will. Thank you so much. I've been struggling with that all day. And... Um, I'm the only one that has come in truth to the truth um, regarding my friends and family. Yes, ma'am. And they don't quite understand where I'm coming from. You know, I'm I'm starting to cover my. You know, I wear hair wraps now. Glory. Um, I'm converting from wearing pants. Glory. Um, I do not. Uh, I do not drink. I do not go out. I do not listen to worldly music. I've changed my whole life. Me and my daughter. Within, let's see, I've been studying for maybe two months now. So all of this change has happened in two months. Really? So and have, you been, have me, you been listening to me for yeah. two months? I just found you. Um, well, let me tell you I this. was listening. So what happened? I was... Okay. Go ahead. Who was you listening to? Well, I, I was listening to this Christian pastor, and what made me want to change my life was the uh, total solar eclipse that happened August 21st. Right. So I watched his video, and, you know, that just brought me to, you know, realization that we are living in the last time. Right. So, you know, I think I did a jump start. I went and joined this Christian church and everything, and, you know, and then I started, I saw your video of why I found you, and, you know, I just started realizing that everything that I've been taught my whole life is not true. What video did you the see? Sabbath day and, and of you? Yeah. You were in a car, and somebody said you were you were saying something back 
to someone that said that you were a fraud or something. So <laughs> what made me watch you was because you were in the car and you, it seemed like you were upset. So I said, well, let me watch this. And then, you know, I heard you speaking and that's what made me go and subscribe. And I've been watching your videos since. Let, and, me, tell you, um, let me tell you this real quick, sister. Not everybody who say that they're Israel is an Israelite. Not everyone says that they're Hebrew or Hebrew. You've got a lot. You're brand mm -hmm. new in it. And I want to go ahead and put these benchmarks up for you because you got a lot of angry, racist, black Hebrew Israelites out there that, that are racist. They hate the white man. They call the white man the devil. I, oh, my goodness. Oh, they're just terrible. Horrible. I see in those videos. They, I know. I know. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the baptism. They don't do any healings. They don't praise. They don't worship it. they just some dead, militant, ignorant people. So... I just thought I'd tell you that to let you know that we're a whole lot different than these people. Have you been introduced to our sisters and sisters I broadcast? Know. No, sir. Well, see, I got notification. My notifications are turned on uh, whenever you post a new uh, video. or And I've seen that you were live and it said that I can call in. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I can get my question answered if I call in. Yes, ma'am. Because right. there's nobody around me that could answer my question because they don't understand me. They don't understand why I'm changing and or any of that. Hey, uh, so you, you got I'm a just pen and sheet of paper? You were on and uh, yes, sir. I can get it right now. I want you to to start listening to our sisters to sisters broadcast. Okay. Uh huh. I'm gonna give you the information. All right. And what's your name again? Yes. My name is the T Shion. I know it's a mouthful, so you can just call me T She. How you spell that? T Y S H E. T She. All right. Yes. All right. I'm gonna give you some information. Okay. okay? I'm ready. All right. www. Uh huh. Dot B L O G. T A L K. Yeah. Dot com. That's blogtalk. Dot com. Uh-huh. Forward slash. Okay. Straightway. S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y. Okay. Now, when you go there, okay. you're going to see mm -hmm. all the previous broadcasts down at the bottom. They're all the archived. You can actually go and download uh, the broadcast every Thursday. Okay. At 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Central Standard Time, our Sister to Sisters broadcast is on. Okay. You would immensely enjoy that, but not only that, you can go there and actually download previous broadcasts, and I'm sure it will bless your soul because I can tell by your spirit it will literally bless your soul. Well, I am so thankful that you even answered and I got through. I got my question answered. I've got even more information that I can, you know, because I don't have anybody to study with, so I study by myself, and I'm not frustrated. You know, I feel when I read my Bible and I uh, really, really, you know, dig into the Scripture and really know what I'm reading, yes, it's almost like I feel like my heart is just opening up, and, you know, now I'm just always happy. I always think positively. You know, it just feels good to know that I am starting uh, to live right, you know, and to live by the Word of God. And Lord I just the King. cannot believe I've been living this way for so long. Well, hey, in the fullness of time, the Most High Yah open your understanding. You do know that we broadcast our Shabbat services live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. You know that, right? No, sir, I don't know that. Well, write this down. Wow. Write this down. Okay. www. Okay, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Dot online. That's online. O-N-L-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. And that's a hyphen or that's a dash church. Okay. Dot O-R-G. Uh-huh. Online dash church dot okay. O-R-G. 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. You can actually watch our live Shabbat services every single Wonderful. Sabbath. And if you actually want to go back and look at some archive services, all you have to do is go to my YouTube page. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side of the page, you have um, a bunch mm -hmm. of other people that I recommend. But then you have something called Straightway okay. Tech Team. 
Straightway Tech Team uploads all our services. And then there's uh, a brother, Daryl. D- brother Daryl uploads all our services. Mm-hmm. And you, sister, you got all types of avenues to be able to stay connected and listen. And you can call Wonderful. the phone number behind me. You can actually ask to speak and call and ask, ask, ask for some of our sisters sometime when you're in the dining hall. Okay. And if you got a question or something, okay. when, if you need something answered and it's burning, it's on your heart, you need an answer during the week, call that dining hall number, 615 688 3025, and they'll be more than happy to speak with you. Wonderful. I am so grateful and so thankful for you. Thank you so much and bless you, Pastor Dow. Well, you are wonderful. You pray for me, okay? I uh, weight lifted off of me. Well, yes. glory to the king. You stay connected, okay? Yes, sir. I sure will. All right. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Now, how in the world can the most high y'all move on somebody that fast in two months to where she's already transitioning because she's been convicted by the Holy Spirit, educated woman at that too again? Ain't y'all good? Who gives us so many blessings, undeserving, that's what we are. We ought to thank him, love and praise him a little bit more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Let's go to Georgia, call number 478, 478. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you in Georgia. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Who am I speaking with? Oh, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, what a blessing it is to even be able to speak to you physically, Pastor. This is my first time uh, talking with you in person. Uh, I have made myself known in, like, physical letters, but my very first time actually getting to speak to you, man, and it's just amazing. Well, bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. What's your name, brother? Thank you, Pastor Dow. I'm Lucas Carter. Lucas, yeah, oh, man. Man, I see your letters all the time. Oh, Pastor, it's an honor to be able to write letters to you, man. I'm so thankful to just be able to hear a word from you, man. It's, it's amazing. It's been water to, like in a desert to me, man. Uh, I, I heard, I heard uh, your, the video, first time I listened to your video was like right, it was about two months, two or three, actually more like four or five months prior to the election. And I was just filming through YouTube, and I've seen that you was pointing at the screen in the view of it, and it said, uh, Trump is not a racist. And I clicked on it, and man, I got a lot more than I was expecting, and I have been looking at your videos daily ever since then, and I love them. Well, love Lord. Them. Eat, it, eat up and drink, 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 and all kind of, of good fruit, good, good, good learning, uh, good learning and help to me, Pastor God. I've been through so much in life, and I'm not trying to be long-winded, because I know you got others listening, but after um, just just really quick, I uh, I'm 35 years old and uh, I grew up in Fort Valley, Georgia. And the uh, guy I grew up with, known him since first grade, came and picked me up, and uh, and I had been had been like a year before I uh, before we kind of hung out or whatever, because we grew apart and. Uh, he wanted me to ride with him. He, he had just got off work, so I got in the truck with the guy, and uh, he wanted me to go to the store. He was like, something was on his mind. So we, he goes to the store, and we're chit-chatting. And all of a sudden, when we left the store, instead of bringing me home, he makes a, a detour and hits Highway 247 toward Macon, and uh, he floors it. And he hits the guy in front of him, and I say, let me out. And he refuses. He just speeds up. And he's doing 120 miles an hour the whole way. And I was praying. And, and at that time, Pastor Dow, you know, I, I called myself praying to speak to the Father. But I was not living or uh, seeking his righteousness. Nothing like I am today. But that, that truck flipped 20 times. And uh, I thought I was dead, man. And uh, it broke my spine in two places. Um, and, and I had to learn how to walk again and stuff. And, 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 and it over about the course of three or four years, going through the humiliations and things, and, 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 and actually just being brought through my knees, you know, I finally stumbled upon your video, Pastor Dow, and it's, I, it's like for the first time, you know, I've been feeling like I've been climbing. And it, it's been a good climb, you know what I mean? It ain't been just sitting in the desert. It's just, it's really been, like, help to my bones, man. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. 
Pastor Dowell. I love you, man, and, 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 and I want to be faithful until death, man, to death all the way. And if that is my prayer, that I, that I stay focused and, and, and learn as, as much as I can and get understanding with all my gifts that I can. Because you shall give understanding, and I thank you, Pastor Dowell. Glory to the Father. Well, my brother, it's, it, it's, it's my honor uh, to be able to serve you. I appreciate you calling in. I appreciate your support. Sound like you got an encouraging um, sister or wife back there in the background as well, too. So y'all continue to keep listening. Yes. We love you, Pastor Dow. <laughs> and I have to too, Pastor Dow. I used to be on drugs here every... And I've been off drugs for like five years now. And when I first saw your video, I it just brought tears to my eyes. Because I was raised up in a Christian church. And thank y'all. I thank y'all today for you because I know the truth now. I have learned the truth. And I thank y'all for you so much, Pastor. Bless both of you. Y'all continue to stay connected and keep listening, okay? Yes, sir. We'll do that. We'll do that. Hallelujah. Good to hear from y'all. Bless you, my brother. Bless your sister. Thank you, Pastor Dow. Bless y'all, too. Bless you, Mother Carol, all the straight Bless way. Mother Carol, too. Father, uh, it, it is just so, <laughs> such a blessing and so encouraging to see the brothers and sisters of straight way living and functioning in that humility, that, 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 that struggle, that hard work that y'all do, man. It just inspires me so much. I'm like, I got no room to complain. These brothers and sisters getting up early, living it every single day. Then I ain't got nowhere to complain, and I will not complain because I don't want to be found a guilty of it. A guilt. I want to. I forget how the Bible says, it, but don't complain, so you'll be found guiltless or something like that. So I do my best to not complain about a thing, Pastor Darrell. I learned that from you for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right. Over to the country, so we get not Yes, sir. We, we worked on it. And I heard you say it took and you four years. It took you four years. You said to move three or four years. That I just heard you say that. That was inspiring too, because we've been working on it. And been like, man, when is it gonna happen? You know, because you know, I'm not, I'm not able to work like I used to be able to, Pastor. But I'm still trying, man. Hallelujah! Just keep going, and y'all will honor faith. Yes, sir. Well, yes, bless y'all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, Thank you. Boy, I tell you, it's good hearing for them. They encouraged too, ain't they? Let's go to Maryland. 240-240 is Pastor Dow. You know, Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you over there in Maryland? Shabbat shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat shalom. Who am I speaking with? Speaking with Brother Jason. Brother Jason. Called him in to talk to you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother Jason. Okay, did you receive the message I sent earlier in the day, straightway, concerning uh, the, the ambassador amongst the heathen and uh, Jeremiah and Obadiah? No, probably didn't. If I did, I, all I get about, I don't know, probably about 300 messages a day. Okay, well, I refresh your memory. I spoke to an elder from your congregation concerning revelation I received in the scripture. All right, now, what is it? I dealt with the motor phone concerning it. It's concerning the Quran. It's oh. concerning Muhammad of Islam. And Israel deliverance here, from here in America. Okay, let's hear what you got. Okay, now this is going to take some time. I'm going to break it down to you. So if you want to deal with this right now, we can deal with it. Oh, no. I'm going to have I mean, to go into some things. So I got about. The edit by the end of it. Ooh, let me see. Man, I got a lot of people in the call queue, so we don't have that much time. Because this, you know, this, this is asked a question, and then I give an answer, and then we move on. Okay, I understand that. But um, I would like to get with you to sit down and deal with this. Because this, what I'm talking about right here concerns the whole nation and what we doing as far as the commandments given to here, how we deal with delivering ourselves out of this captivity. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how the Bible reads. I'm not sure if this is the doctrine of a straight way, but this is how the scriptures read, deliver every man your own soul. Do you know, um, do you know much about straight way and what we're doing? 
No, I, I don't, sir. But I'm, I'm telling you that this is concerning that matter, and this is going to concern, concern Israelite men throughout the whole nation. This truth right here is going to cut all the false doctrine of these camps out here. It's going to cut all of this. But we have to sit down and deal with it. Now, this don't take five minutes. This is something that's dealing with the whole entire nation. And this, is, this isn't this is any joke or matter. I know you receive a lot of phone calls, but this right here concerns the whole nation. I'll tell you and what. I'm going to bring it to Judah. You, and you, I'm going to bring it to Judah. And we don't have to deal with this. All right. You call them down and I'll leave your number. And I'll, I'll give you the one of our elders, okay? Oh, well, I, I dealt with that last time. And, you know, your elder said he was going to look into it. I gave y'all a week. What what was his name? Get back to me as far as the judgment. Uh, actually, I didn't get his name, but I know the exact day I spoke to him, the exact time I spoke to him. Tuesday of last week. All right. Thirteen twenty-two. Well, you got to realize, my brother. We um, brother, we are. I mean, I don't know how I can get this over to you, but man. Brother, we have a lot of people that call us on a daily basis. Okay, I understand that, but but what I'm saying here with this this situation trumps all of that. Well, we'll be the judge of that. I know that sounds presumptuous. But no, but I mean, you know, if the Bible says if a man got a vision, let him tell. If he got a dream, let him tell it. If he has a prophecy, let him tell it. Got to hear me out before answering, because a lot of brothers, you know, I've spoke to multiple camps multiple camps and no one wants to sit down and deal with this as soon as they hear uh, Muhammad of Islam or any of that. They don't want to hear nothing about it. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, man. There's a, the nation. Let me ask you a question. Is Yahshua Hamashiach the Messiah? Yes, he is. Okay. All right. Well, just give us a call. Give us a call in, man. Like I said, just if nobody answers you need or oh, get back with you, you need to keep calling because Merle, we we're not like a lot of these other ministries, but when we tell you we busy, uh, if you looked at our videos and know about the ministry, man, we're seriously straight up busy. We're not no idle people here. Okay. Is, is you guys doctrine that straight way that we are to leave about the land of the north? When it says the children of Israel shall walk out of the land of the north, that is Israel and that is America. And we are supposed to leave and not remain here in America, correct? Or is it y'all doctrine that we y'all hold a position here in America? What is our doctrine? Like I said, this is concerning the whole nation. This is concerning the whole nation of Israel. Everyone in truth for this faith. And we got to bring this word of exactly what it says. Let me ask you this so question, and we'll go ahead and go on this part right here. Hold on, hold on. Don't try to overtalk me now. When I'm talking, you listen to me. I won't, brother. Because you call my yeah. broadcast. All right? So if I'm talking, you shut your mouth and sit up and listen to me for a minute. You're not going to sit up and loud talk me. Now, my question is to you, is how is the Most High Yah going to gather his people together? He's going to gather them through his word. Everything that we have to do, all the instructions are in this word. But we have to deal with Ishmael. Well, I'm and asking you straight up a question. How is the Most High Yah going to gather his people together like the prophet says? Through the Spirit, through the words of this book, it tells us exactly what to do. In the position that we're in right now, it tells us exactly what to do. All right, I tell you what, you go ahead and call the dining hall. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next phone call. Uh, but you still, in my opinion, you got a lot to learn because you couldn't answer that question. All right, Pastor Corey, where you at? 816 Missouri. This is Pastor Dow, Interstate Jude Radio Broadcast. I can help you. How you doing, Pastor? Hey, I'm doing well, Pastor. I got a few testimonies I'm going to go about. I love it. It's like I talk to you all the time about being men. You know, we, we, we have a job, Pastor, in making sure that those who are going to hear, hear the true word without interference. And so when you have people like this, you know, who come with have knowledge. You got people um, who, you know, like Pastor Tatum and all these other distractions. They're only there to distract people. So you hear me, Pastor? I can hear you, Pastor. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So 
I posted a picture on Straightway Heritage uh, Facebook page. And I'm on, you know, we, we're getting ready to have a weekend pass. So we're going to stay here all weekend on NFC. We're going to pray. We're going to war. We're going to send curses. And we're going to do a lot of things. And we got a lot of new faces. In fact, I got a sister here, Sister Sandra, who she met Sister Danielle. And it was all behind the accident that Danielle was in, what, last week? And so the sister came here. And we're going to get to the testimony. It ain't going to be long, past, But this is, this. I mean, the most high is be safe. He is. And this is why I try to get Israel to stay focused on. We stay focused on that. We get into the kingdom. Because then we ain't letting Satan and nobody else come and steal the true word out of the heart because we seeing him work among us. Oh, hallelujah. Well, this is Sister Sandra, and this is Sister Danielle. Sister Danielle, and uh, it, it's on speakerphone, so you can speak up, you know, loud so all Israel can hear this testimony. And how did you meet Sandra coming out of the courtroom. Right, what happened? Just happened to walk down the street, and my spirit was heavy at first, but then I noticed I need to smile through whatever going on. I don't care about nothing in this world. The most high is using me. I still need to smile. So I just happened to uh, hear, I heard this little voice. I didn't know where it was coming from, and I just turned around. And I seen this lady walking down the street full of bags in her hand. Good morning. This is Sandra, a sister Sandra. So uh, Danielle turned around and says, are you talking to me? And I said, no, I'm praying. And she offered to help me and give me a ride home. And I was reluctant at first. But I couldn't believe that somebody, a stranger, was going to help me. Well, she gave me a ride home. And it wasn't far, and we stayed outside, and we prayed. And inside that car, we felt the Holy Spirit, and we I was crying and shaking. I was coming from a very dark place. It was the first time I ever talked to a stranger. She invited me to come to the congregation, and I tell you what, it was the most earth-shaking, shattering, glorious experience I ever had in my life. And, and ever since then... My sister and all these people that I met has just really turned my whole life around. I, I am so ready to praise and worship the Lord this whole weekend. I'm so excited. And and this is what, what happened, Pastor. You know, we was in service last week uh, during the evening service. I mean, two weeks ago, right? Yes. And before the service started, the spot the planted in my spirit, tell her you're going to pray for her. And I said, okay, I said, Sandra, I don't know what, but it just hit my spirit that I need to pray for you, but I don't know what I'm praying for. Is that what I said? Right, right, yes. And so when we got towards the end of the service, it hit my spirit. It asked her about the chest pain that she is having. I, now, I, I didn't know nothing about the chest pain, Pastor. It just, I, I, I was obedient. I asked her. And when I asked her, what happened? I could hardly breathe, and, and I was holding on to myself, and I never really told anybody how much pain I had. And, I, and yes, we made eye contact, and I was just crying, and everything was just, my whole body was just shaking. I just couldn't imagine, I can't even imagine some of the words I was going through, what was happening to me. It was, it was amazing. It was just amazing. Hallelujah, Pastor. We and we began to lay hands on her and pray and the spar, my goodness, Pastor. Hallelujah. The spirit moved so tough. And I mean this this, this thing was shaking down there, Pastor. I mean it was it was unbelievable, man. And it just you know, it, it just reminds me when Israel come and just offer ourselves up unto our master to be what we supposed to be in this time, knowing that these are the last times. You know, you have people like this that's coming in. They, they're coming in. Their heart is wide open. And for the master to show up working in us, confirming the sign. This is somebody ain't never met us. Right. I ain't never even talked to him 
I only did and was obedient, Pastor. And she here tonight. She she is running. It's people here tonight running. It's a it's a whole nother family here. And it's somebody else, people that's calling that we don't even know that we're not gonna allow them to come to the land. We're gonna come to them. We're gonna go to them. Well, Lord to the king. Bring, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, I, I, again, we thank you for laboring and laboring and laboring. And we pray against them that's against you, against all the saints, against all of Israel. We're going to war like crazy, Pastor. We're going to keep everybody. <laughs> you all have to. You got that right, man. We're getting ready to put some mess on Tatum and all the rest of these jackals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, Pastor. Shalom. Keep at it, Pastor. Keep at it. Yes, sir. And keep keep going. Amen. Y'all keep hey y'all listen. <laughs> y'all listen to Pastor out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will. Y'all listen to him and do what he tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Man, it's just another testimony of the power of y'all right there. Here's Pastor minding his own business. Next thing you know, he's got to pray for someone. Next thing you know, the sister ended up getting healed. That's part of the ministry. Power of y'all. Hallelujah. The most high y'all led y'all there. So you better make sure y'all listen and do what he says and do what his wife say. Hallelujah. Where we at? Oh, Jesus. Let's go to, 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 to where am I at? I know I got somebody down here that's been on here for a while. North Carolina, Brother Timothy, 919, 919, Pastor Dow, you know, Sir Richard Radio Broadcast. How can I help you down there? We're going to go to Arizona to Sister Rachel. How can I help you, Brother Timothy? Brother Timothy going once? Brother Timothy going Timmy, we can barely hear you. Okay. All right, hold on one minute. Can you hear me now a little bit better? We got you. All right, cool, cool. Sorry about that. My phone's been tripping. People been saying they couldn't hear me, and then, I don't know. But how are you doing uh, tonight, Pastor? Uh, we blessed on the most high y'all highly favor. What you got? Uh, oh, nothing much. I was just... Uh, Looking forward to uh, coming down there for tabernacles and different stuff like that because I called in and uh, got the confirmation from uh, Elder Becker. And uh, Well, if Elder you know, Becker gave you a confirmation, by, uh, then you can come. Yes, sir, and I'm trying to get And he said uh, if anything was to change because I got a buddy of mine that uh, that uh, he uh, he might he might be coming. He's uh, He hadn't been out there before, but uh, he's, uh, he's definitely a different sort of fellow right there. Yeah, but how long has he been listening to us? Uh, he's been, actually, he's listening to you way before I came to listen. By the time I told him I listened to you, he said, oh, yeah, I heard of him. I, I listened to him. Yeah, but does he got a righteous spirit? Well, from what, uh, what I've known with you, he's saying, you know, obviously, you know, uh, try and test to see if you actually have a friend or a brother right there. From what I've seen, I mean, he, uh, He's very much focused on uh, living a clean lifestyle. Or, you know, right. he, well, he was raised a lot different from how I was raised because, you know, his parents taught him a lot of the stuff that was like historical things that occurred. He he has almost like a different education than some of the people. It's like he's from a different different country, but he grew up here because, like, I talk to people from other countries that come over here, and he has a knowledge like they have a knowledge of actual history. All right, my brother. We'll go on your word. Yeah, definitely. And I'll uh, and I'll, I'm still trying to get my dad to come down there too as well. He's just uh, he said he's a little uh, he's a little uh, worried about the tent thing again right there. But uh, see, I think we might have to take your advice on getting that cotton and everything like that. It's a whole lot better if you have a cot. A whole lot better if you got cot and you come prepared. Yes, sir. I was gonna say I was, I was a little bit more like Elder Becker. Me, I ain't, I ain't mind really sleeping on on the ground like that. But I guess I'm I'm a little I'm younger than my dad, so I guess I I could take. You know, I'm still got I got a young back right now. Yeah, you got a young back. 
Yes, sir. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, bless you and uh, look forward to seeing all the saints and everything out there, sir. And, uh, you know, I was looking at an old video of uh, when you were on Debate Talk for you, and uh, you know what? It's just it's just miles a part of, like, uh, wisdom that you were bringing. When, uh, I don't remember that. I think it was, like, the two brothers, like, ambushed you or something like that up there. Yep, tried to. Yeah, and a lot of people in the comments, boy, they were just vehement. They were just upset, angry, but shoot. When I was listening, I, I was listening to what you were saying, what you and what they were saying. What they were saying was just, they ain't, it, it didn't, didn't hold no water for me. So I just wanted to say, uh, hey, you uh, definitely, uh, Jeremiah 315, and you're definitely, uh, man, it's just like, I, I think totally different than I used to, and I thank you for it. Well, I thank you. Time for it. All right, bless you, my brother. All right, now, what? Uh, all right, bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Arizona, Sister Rachel, call number 928-928, Pastor Dog, Inner Circuit Truth Radio Broadcast. How can I help you, Sister Rachel? How you doing, Pastor? This is uh, this is Sister Rachel's husband. I'm All calling right. on her phone. How you doing, um, Sister I, Rachel? Husband? I just wanted to um, <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing great. My my name is my name is Will. Um, and and the reason why I'm calling you because I was just sitting here listening with my wife and everything, and I said, you know what? Maybe I just want to make myself known. Right. Um, uh, I want to thank you guys for um, the I listened to a few of your services in the past. And at first, I just wasn't getting it because I wasn't opening up my eyes, opening up my ears. And I kept listening, and I kept listening. And, and, and what you're saying is actually sinking into my heart and sinking into my soul because I realized um, even back when I was young and going to the churches I went to, the Christian churches, wherever I went to, at a young age, I knew what I was listening to wasn't right. And now what I'm hearing, without any explanation, it just feels right. It just feels right to me. And... Um, and, and I'm just letting you know that I'm going to be listening to your services more often. I don't know exactly everything that's going on, but I'm learning. My wife is letting me know a whole lot of stuff, and I'm researching stuff for myself. She talks about the sister to sister all the time, and she had a great time with you guys a few weeks ago when she got baptized. And when I see her smile like that and happy like that, it just makes me want to know what she knows and learn and see it for myself. And, um, and, and your services I heard this past uh, Saturday, with um, uh, Jesus, Brother Jesus and um, uh, Justice, they were here at my house and we listened to the service together. And and I just sat there and I listened and I was actually getting it. I said, this is what, these are some of these questions that I've been having all this time. Yep. Like I said, I know you haven't met me before, but but I can guarantee you that you're going to meet. So I just want to tell you, I appreciate I appreciate what you said and I appreciate the words that you said that, that um, touched me and I made me want to want to hear more. Uh, you even quoted a um, scripture, um, Deuteronomy, I think you said Deuteronomy 419, that I had a dream about 10 years ago. And I was like, wow, are you serious? I've never read that scripture before, but when you quoted it, I remembered it. I remember what you were saying. And, and I was like, okay, this, this is some kind of confirmation. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't understand everything that's going on here, but my heart, my mind, is opening up to listen to this and come to this truth, believe it, and, and work it. Glory. I, I just wanted to let you know that. Yes, Glory. Yeah, Sister Rachel was the one who stopped by and got baptized, correct? That is, that is correct. And she's been smiling and doing a jig ever since she's been home. Man, let me tell you something, man. Uh, believe it or not, she's on the right path. And I'm glad that you actually even um, considering and really, truly doing your due diligence and really watching, listening, learning, and even in fellowship, brother, because um, this is the way. Walk ye here in. This is right. the way. This is the way and, and to the true Messiah. Him. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Yeah. It is the true way. And I'll be the first to admit, I am that um, stiff neck, that stiff neck, stubborn, stubborn <laughs> guy. And, um, and, and I know that I, I I need I need you to talk to me a certain way. The way you the way you deliver, the way you the way you preach, and the, and the way you um, teach is what I need. I don't need nobody to come at me soft because I'd be like, man, what are you talking about? You talk to me that way. This is this is how I get the message, and that is exactly what you're doing. So I'm going to keep listening. To you. Yeah, got 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 to talk to a man like a man. <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right. And, uh -huh. and, I, and, I, and that's exactly what I told my wife too. 
And at first I was like, man, why he talking like that? Why he talking like that? But now I realize, okay, he's talking like that because he's trying to get through my thick head. So, <laughs> so okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Good to hear so, from you, my brother. So this is I appreciate it. And, um, and um, my wife did tell I'm going to let you go because I know you got other people online. My wife did tell me that um, when when she was first started listening to you, she told me you were airborne and everything, and I was like, I'm, and I'm gonna say, um, we are brothers in that too, because I was I spent 13 years in the military, and I was also airborne also. So, you know, glory to the king. Else. You're my brother in airborne. Brothers of the silk. Glory to the king. Yep. So I want you guys to have a great weekend. Shabbat shalom, and, um, and we will be. Um, and, and thank you. I don't I don't know what hit hey, brother hey dude, and uh, just in this way, but I'm glad you did. Because um, I know they're a lot younger than me, but they're teaching me so much, and, uh, and, and I'm ready to learn, and I appreciate it. Hey, they got a lot they can teach you. I promise you that they've been with me for a long time. Yeah, they, 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 that's what they told me. That's what they told me. I mean, I, I, my wife listened to um, uh, Justice sing every day, wake up in the morning, in the afternoon, in the middle of singing. And I go to sleep at night, I'm singing the song. I just learned it from her, just from hearing her sing it. So, <laughs> so I, guess, I, I guess she got the angelic voice that puts me to sleep every night, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, bless you, sir. Keep watching, keep listening, listen tomorrow morning, all right? All right, I sure will. I, you know, I think Brother Jesus and Justice come over here tomorrow, and we're going to all listen together. All right, bless you. Bless you, Sister Rachel. Bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. You have a good day. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Boy, y'all, man, he's bringing his people together, ain't he? Man, he's bringing his people together. Oh, yeah, by the way, the sister in Illinois is Teresha. Where, um, it's blogtalkradio.com forward slash straightway. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash straightway. Glory to the king. Thank you, Elder Rufus. Let's go to Kentucky. Brother Mike, call number 614-614. Pastor Dow, you're on Straight Retreat Radio Broadcast. I can help you, Brother Mike. Shabbat Shalom, my shepherd. Shabbat Shalom. Man, Shabbat Shalom. How you doing, my brother? Out here getting at it, loving everything, everything that, that's coming out of this ministry. I'm so excited. I actually know how y'all felt. When, when, when I came and other people came during the time that I came to the ministry, because now I'm experiencing that and as I see people, uh, eyes be open and they come to the ministry and they start those first pains, those first sufferings of dealing with natural family. Yes, sir. If they get past that pass down and find out who their family really is that y'all give them, mm -hmm. like Jesus said, who is my mother, who is my brother, whoo, there ain't nothing like it. Hallelujah. You got it, my brother. You got it. Say on. Uh, I wanna, I wanna commend you, Pastor Dow. I absolutely love many of the videos. The one I'm gonna speak on is the the, the ten minute, uh, or it was like ten minutes. They were all like ten minutes or, or a little bit more. Uh, the polygamy series that was brilliant. The way you chopped it up because <laughs> it gave us a moment to marinate in that truth and and, and, and yearn for the next part two and part three. I really enjoyed that. Um, it, it, it made wise the simple, and then once it's wise, boy, I tell you, they got, a, they got nothing but the truth. And you can't deny the truth. The truth sets you free. There ain't nothing like being set free. And every time people come this way, Pastor, just like it happened to me, when, I, when me and my family came this way, the devil had already shown up and was stirring up and was showing up. And he shows up in people that were a part of this ministry, and they stir up, and they want to drag people away. And it just calls all kind of just, you can see it. I can see it now. I can see that spirit now. Yeah. Work and operate in the, it's just, it's, you can see it every time, every time. Yeah, the devil and enters I'm into it. Yes, sir. I just want to encourage people that come this way, boy, if you get past them, them, them first suffering to dealing with your natural family and that mess, because when I came here, nothing, it, 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 it did not connect because you were preaching and teaching one thing and the Spirit was delivering and setting free and, and, and people were getting healed, but yet over here, people that were a part of all this was acting a damn fool, cutting the fool and slandering and false accusing. I don't let that get you, I tell you. Don't pay that mess no attention. I didn't, and, I, and I'm blessed for it. 
Brother, I'm with you. You know, I kind of agree good. with uh, Brother Bud. Uh, Brother Bud up there in Minnesota um, from Polygamy HQ, he made a statement to me the other day, I think it was a few days ago, and he said, Pastor, he said, Charles, uh, he said, let me tell you something. He said, really, people are not a, as much against polygamy as you think you are, they are. What they are against is patriarchal rule, the order that Yah has set up. Because remember, Eve set out, Satan used Eve to set out to defy the order of authority. And I think he's on to something right there. I tell you what, you just answered one of my questions, Pastor, because I was going to ask you, why is it other men can come to the United States of America with, with, with in, a, in a polygyny, a biblical uh, uh, relationship with wives and family, and they can be accepted? But if an American man uh, uh, abide by that, by the scripture, by the teaching, by the Bible, why do they have a problem with us? What? We don't even, I don't even have to have, I only have one wife, but people have a problem with me acknowledging that that's true. Well, that's because these people have been domesticated. And the problem is, that you, you know, I think that personally, in this monoligamous Western society, that this is the ultimate litmus test concerning truth. I've already said, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times, 95% of the people in America would never ever participate in the practice, but don't sit up there and, and call somebody a liar or condemn somebody in sin when you can't find one law against it. It's just as righteous and just as true as, as just monolygamous marriage. But I'm not going to sit up there. See, I'm a beacon and a light post, and I'm a mouthpiece against all these people out there who try to make these people feel like that they're second-rate citizens or they don't belong. I'm a voice for these people crying in the wilderness and telling everybody else, you can go to hell for all I'm concerned. Because <laughs> you can't do nothing against this truth. It's all about loving truth. All right. This, this is a serious question. I'm going to ask you this is a serious question. What is Christian dating. I see all the Christian churches promote this. What is Christian dating? Well, them pagans. They got websites where you pay money. You pay money, you become a member, and you can sign up, put your picture on there, and you can join Christian dating. What is that, Pastor? That's a bunch of, that's Babylon. That's a bunch of lies, because there's no such, de you know, and then listen to me. Uh, you got to listen to me real close. Christians don't obey the Bible. Christians do whatever they want to do. Christians use the Bible to support their theories, their theology, and their ideals. So the Bible is not written for Christians anyway because they're not God's people. So they do Christian dating because that's what Christianity allows them to do. But for those of us who are Israelites that have law, statutes, and commandments, we know there ain't no such thing as dating. You're either betrothed or you're not, period. Now, I learned that over here. And you know what over here, Pastor, is nobody, family, friends, nobody in this world had anything against any wickedness that I lived in. But when I came this way and started living truth, Woo! I couldn't believe folks came out good work. I couldn't believe it. You know it's a spiritual battle. You know it's the devil. It's got to be a spiritual battle because, you man... You know just well as I do, man, we live like devils. Nobody said nothing. As a matter of fact, they praised us. But, man, as soon as we start keeping his commandments, woo, boy, as soon as we start keeping his commandments, it was Whoa. over with. Yeah. Hey, Pastor, I'm going to change gears real quick. Uh, uh, Brother Steve, uh, uh, is a RN. I mean... That's a lot of schooling to become an RN. Yes. And last time I checked, the RN, a RN is just beneath a medical doctor because if, if, if the patient's treatment is successful, the, the doctor gets all the, all the glory, but, but if it ain't, then the RN catch hell. And for Brother Steve to, to, to attend God's, uh, uh, God's event this year, and for him to rave about stuff he learned <laughs> at first aid, I'm, I'm coming, Pastor. Can you sign me up? Can you put me on the list? Somebody get Pastor Pen. Can you put me on the list? <laughs> we need it. You on the list, bro, Mike. Hey, check this out. This year at Tabernacles, uh, we may even do. Um, 
I was actually thinking about taking one day and doing maybe like not a gods, you know, during time, but just maybe doing uh, a one day of teachings for those who wanted to That's attend. Fine. I was thinking about that. Hey, Pastor, that, that would be wonderful. I bless you. Pastor, we need to compensate. You just spoke a little bit on this. And, you know, I know that you ain't never been about money. I, I, I ain't even going to go into that. But uh, we need to the fee, like, consider raising the fee so that these men that have come from far away, because I heard what you said and how far they come and, and how well trained they are and the teaching that they gave and the classes that they gave, they need to at least be compensated and break even. If not, we yeah, I'd love to be able to bless them with more than that, personally. Well, i tell you what, next it's year of God's feet is, is not going to be um, at the uh, extremely low, low price that it has been. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be raising this fee considerable. As a matter of fact, nobody be able to get through the gates for less than $100 next, next year. And that's still cheap. That's, and that's still cheap. That is still cheap. Past, Pastor Fox has a class, a winter bob and stuff, and a few other things that he charges a thousand dollars for one week of training, and it's I'm worth good. and it's worth that's every bit of it. Yes, sir. And we don't accept coupons. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing I'm gonna speak on, Pastor. I'm gonna let you go. Is that you know. Uh, when, like, you know, people just come and might not know exactly the extent of it, but I'm going to speak on it because these people, these wicked people out there who used to be a part of us, who benefited from being a part of us. Like, so many people do that, and then they and then they turn tough tail when they get caught running dirty and, and riding dirty. They yeah. turn tough tail, and then they want to bat them out the minute they still take their ass away. Yeah. I ain't going to say no name, but um, we've done nothing but good to this man and his family and his wife, and even when he was found riding dirty in judgment, the leaders of Israel, who, who I commend, even then, they looked out for him, and they did what was righteous in dealing with him. Didn't nobody know none of his dirt, none of his crap, and he could have he could have received that judgment and, and, and really been set apart. You're talking about being set apart, receiving that judgment, and walked in the newness of life, but he choosing to just go out here and want to tear away these troops and one of this, you know what I'm talking about, Pastor. How these people do? Jealousy is the rage of a man, and he will not spare. Oh, well, Pastor, I need you to spare me from some rage. I can, I can handle that. I don't want to get in that copyright infringement deal coming up. I don't want to get in that copyright infringement deal coming up against me. So I want to run something past you because I've watched you learn how to play an instrument. I've watched you write songs on that instrument. You already have written songs before. You learned how to play that new instrument. That was guitar. So you know, you know some stuff about music. You taught the boys how to play bass, how to play drums, um, and, and, and I played professionally. And I'll come in and learn some stuff from you. And I thank you for it. I, I might, one day I might tell you what it is. But anyway, um, <laughs> I wanted to run something by you because I don't want no copyright infringement coming up on me from these people over in you know, these wicked ass people over in Illinois. So I can run I can run one verse by you, and, and, and you can tell me if I'm if I'm infringing on the copyright, or I can just I can run it past you when I see you first. Go ahead. All right, you sitting down, Pastor. I'm sitting down. All right. Charlie me, Pony loves a stallion's baloney. <laughs> e I T -E I ho. Because of the stallion, <laughs> Johnny Pony Stallion, Johnny Pony, Pony Andy, you're a practicing husband, false accuser, unemployed slanderer, uh, false teacher, husband, won't let her go, he won't let Johnny Pony go, Johnny Pony lives a polyandria lifestyle. Johnny Pony got a husband over here. Johnny Pony got a husband over here. Johnny Pony got a husband upstairs, swinging sausage everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Johnny Pony <laughs> loves that Italian, Italian sausage belongs. E I E I 
Oh. Oh, bless you, bro. <laughs> Shalom. Shabbat shalom, bro. Mike Joe, Jesus. Let's go to Minnesota. <laughs> and Brother Gene, 612, 612 is Pastor Dow. You know, Sherby True Radio Broadcast. I can help, Brother Gene. <laughs> uh, can you hear me well? Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha, bro. Bud, come on. So, you know, I've been kicked out of about 13 churches in the last, you know, six years. Mm hmm. One of the things I find that's very interesting is pastors who will, when res respectfully brought with truth, will not even consider it. Right. So my question is to you, in the last two or three years, what has God really kind of slapped you across the face and, and you thought, wow, I didn't see that? How did you approach it? I mean, when it when it went against your years of you know years of life in the Word, you go, man, I never saw that. It goes completely against what I've been doing, and I need to be obedient. But it just, I need to. Do you study a long time? Do you study? Do you take the time? What What is the process you do? And I'll I'll get off the air and I'll let you answer as I'm off air. All right, bless you, brother Gene. About to own. The way I usually go about doing that anytime that y'all have to listen to me very closely. Um, I remember when I first came into the Sabbath. All right. The first thing that I did when it was introduced to my mind, first of all, number one, spiritually, you already know in the spirit when something is the truth. You may not know chapter, you may not know verse, you may not know the intricate workings of it. But there's something in your spirit that already knows. And what you need is the knowledge to be able to catch up with what your spirit is confirming. What I usually do, and same way I did with polygyny. Now, I've always always believed that a man could have more than one wife. Um, and I've always told my wife that from what I read from the Bible. But I really, truly didn't get into the subject, just like with the Sabbath, um, until it was... You know, the, the most high quickened it in my spirit. And whenever, I can tell when the most high quickened something to my spirit and he wants me to set aside some time. So what I would do is I would set aside some time. I would study only what the Bible had to say. And the first place I would start is the scriptures. And then I would go see what the prophets had to say, what the apostles had to say. I didn't want to hear from um, Moody, I didn't want to hear from Charles Spurgeon, I didn't want to hear from Constantine, I didn't want to hear from Martin Luther, I didn't want to hear from Plato, I didn't want to hear from Socrates, I didn't want to hear from nobody else. All I wanted to know is what the Bible said. Once I studied, it could took, it, it depend on the subject, it could have took one year, two years, or three years. Once I knew exactly what the Bible said, and I had it deep down in my heart, to where I know what the Bible says, it was easy for me to go and read other commentaries and other things what other men had to say. And I knew when they were lying because I had already knew what the scriptures said. That is the best approach and the only approach when it comes to knowing the truth that sets you free. Know what the creator of the universe says through his prophet Moses, the prophets, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, and the apostles, and then everything else. When you already got your ears tuned to the scriptures, when somebody comes with something contrary to what that word says and gives an uncertain sound, you will already know the truth, and you will know who those that are living in error, and that's the truth. Tennessee, call number 901, 901 is Pastor Dow, in the Sherman Tude Radio Broadcast. I can help you there in Tennessee. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. This is Sister Natasha. Bless you. How are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm, I'm well, going through a lot of challenges, but I... 
just want to thank you and uh, especially the mothers of Israel. I'm sure they know who they are. Helping me because uh, this ministry is my lifeline. Well, <laughs> so I just thank the Father for for this ministry. But I just had two questions. Sorry, I was running upstairs because it's not really why the people around me to hear. Go ahead. But, but the first question is, yes, sir, I'm in Memphis right now, the good Tennessee, um, probably for a few months, maybe up to a year, I'm not sure exactly, but I would like to know if I can come to um, Trumpets. Sure. Come on down. Tabernacles. Okay. Thank you so much. Bless you for that. And then also, are you aware of any saints that live in Memphis? Or that in what? Close to Memphis, maybe not. In Memphis, Tennessee? Memphis? Yes, sir. Huh. Let me see. Man, there was Brother Terrence down there, but I got to get with that situation right there because they had a young man came up. Right now, right now, not that I know of. Okay, no problem. So just Thank just, you, just stay in touch and be faithful, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you so very much. Bless you, sir. All right. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Yes. Shabbat shalom. Ah. Uh, Let's go, Brother Matt, Arizona. 928, 928. It's Pastor Dolly on Serpent Truth Radio Broadcast. How can you help, Brother Matt? Shabbat Shalom, my pastor. How are things going? It's going well. You know, I'm in here fighting sin, hell, and the devil. Probably that dead gum waltz that stung me last Sabbath, too, but I got him. I broke him into pieces. Other than that, we're doing well, my brother. I can help you. <laughs> Sir, I just let you know. Uh... I'm looking forward to Tabernacles. Uh, my wife, Sister Lisa, is here with me right now. She wants to say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Bless you. Looking forward to seeing y'all. Shabbat Shalom. So uh, we're bringing in all the children. We're going to grab Brother Cody out of Payson, Brother John in Phoenix, and we're all going to ride to Tennessee together. Um, we're going to rent an extra vehicle. So if there's any uh, brothers or sisters in Arizona who would like to tag along, um, they're welcome to join us. We're going to be there for the whole whole feast, you know, all the way through. So well, we're, we're getting excited. Man, y'all might want to try to just go ahead and just, instead of renting an extra big, y'all might just want to try to just, just start off renting a, like a 12-passenger van. Well, we have one van that holds seven, so we were just going to get an extra vehicle to go with us. Oh, I got you. You already got one. I got you. Yes, sir. And because uh, we were planning, we're going to drive at nighttime when we start off after the Shabbat. Right. You know, so the children, while the children, are, <laughs> while the children are sleeping, and we've been trying to look for like motel rooms in the Dallas, Texas area. And the cheapest ones we can find right now are like five hundred a night to a thousand dollars. Wait, 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 ho, 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 ho. What? Where are you planning on stopping at in the Texas area? Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Carrollton, Texas. We're going to try to drive all the way through till we got there because we're coming up from Phoenix. Well, if you're coming up from Phoenix, man. There are some saints in Dallas, man, that probably will open up their doors to y'all and let y'all stay the night, man, rather than sitting up there staying in some stinky motel, brother. You call the dining hall, oh, and you saints that live in Dallas that want to open up your doors and let brother Matt and sister Lisa and his family uh, stop by and spend the night rather than spending $500 to $1,000 a night in a hotel room, be a lover of hospitality, call the dining hall. Leave your phone number tomorrow so we can take care of the saints and the most high God. See, that's how you do it, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. That's amazing. Yeah, we're looking forward. Even the, our children are like, oh, can we go see Pastor Dow? And we're like, yeah, here in a couple weeks, we'll be headed that way. So we're all excited. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Glory to the King. Y'all is good. Yes, sir. All right. Shabbat Shalom. You have a wonderful evening, sir. Bless you, brother Matt. Bless you, Sister Lisa. Shabbat shalom, Lisa. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, sir. 
All right, Brother Robert, Nebraska. Last call tonight, 402. Brother Robert, how you doing, sir? Hey, good pastor. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. Um, Hey, my wife wants to say Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, uh, hey, so we're coming down for Tabernacles. What was that wine that you and your wife really liked? What was the name of that? Uh, Kendall Jackson. I like Kendall Jackson Merlot. Sister Carol, she's a cheap one. She liked this 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 cheap wine called Black Doctor. It only costs like eight nine dollars a bottle. <laughs> But I, I like the Kendall Jackson Merlot. The Merlot? Okay. Kendall Jackson Merlot. And then what, what did she like again? Something called Black Doctor. But, if you, I mean, Sister Carol's just cheap as I don't know what, man. I, I She like that cheap stuff, man. I don't know what it is, Sister Carol, but she like that. You could probably get her some Wild Eyes Roll or some Mad Dog 2020. She'd be fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, man. Call the dining hall and ask her, man. All right, because we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to load up and we're going to have a celebration. So, all right, looking forward to seeing y'all. All right, bro, Robert. Shabbat shalom. Love you. Love you, too. All right, man. All oh, the saints of the Most High Yah. Thank you, Jesus. For calling your people and being in us while we're on this side of glory. Oh, how we love you. Hallelujah, how we love you. I'll see y'all all tomorrow morning on Shabbat be the Father's will. And I think it is his will. I bless y'all. Them sweet press of the strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming name. I'll soon come to King Yahshua Hamashiach. Jesus the Christ. Shabbat Shalom. King coming, Israel. See y'all in the morning, all right? Y'all be encouraged, all right? Glory to the king.